Hello and welcome to the 66 tutorial in the Cocos 2D JS version 3 series. In this part we're going to be looking at the debug information provided by Cocos 2D JS. We'll be using the source code from the 7th tutorial. If you don't have it, don't worry, there'll be a link in the description. So you're creating your next epic game, but you have the FPS information in the bottom of the, the screen in the left hand side, bottom left. This is great for development purposes, it's absolutely amazing for that. But when publishing your game, you will want to disable it because otherwise it doesn't look very professional. At the very least, uh, I, I, I think the odd game may want it, it may suit it to have some sort of debug uh, activated so you can add some sort of console command or some button in settings but generally you want it disabled. And the debug info, actually first of all what I'm going to do is open a terminal. We won't be coding anything in the app.js for this. But let's run the project so you can see exactly what I mean by the debug information. Run dash p web. Okay, here we go. Yeah, this is the debug information right here. So this is just the vertex cores. Uh, this is the um, it, this is the frame rate information right. Oops, sorry, right here. And yeah. Basically, this is great for debugging so we can see if it's dipping down to like 23 frames per second or it's at a constant 60 frames per second. But what we want to do is disable it for an actual game, and to do that, or to modify the debug information in any form, you open up your project.json, just any sort of text editor would do. And the first mode we want to look at is the FPS. So this is set to true, we set this to false. Open up our web browser, refresh. Mm. Yeah, it's disappeared now. And if we just go back, and uh, what we're going to do is change that back to true, and we're just going to mess around with the frame rate. So if we put, I don't know, 30 frames per second. So th this is great if we wanted to see how well our game ran at a lower frame rate. So let's try and increase it, see what happens there. There we go, we got 120 frames per second. So yeah, like so this is great. So if you want to see if it runs not necessarily smoothly but at a consistent speed, because obviously at 15, 20 frames per second, it's not gonna be smooth. But at 40, 50 frames per second, when you get the odd dip, it's still smooth, but you want to make sure it's running. Same you don't want it to slow down or increase if you or if the frame rate goes above 60 for whatever reason. So let's just, just yeah, let's just put this back to 60. The last thing we're going to talk about is the debug mode and to explain that a bit more I'm going to open up the main.js as you can see in the debug mode there's a number 1 at the moment you, it doesn't mean anything to us if we go to our main.js all the debug modes are explained so number 1 it reports errors, asserts, warnings and logs and it prints them in the console 0 prints nothing most likely you'll probably want this for your final version. You don't want any errors or anything like that. One couple of reasons. One, you can sort of see the inner working of the code. Also, it's just not very friendly, user friendly, and a another reason is because when you're logging stuff out, it, it's having a negative impact on the performance of the application. A lot of the time it's minor. But again, whatever you can do to get that little bit of performance or that extra bit of performance, do it. And it will all add up. And then obviously you've got number two is just errors, asserts, warnings, but no logs we printed out. And then there's no warnings in the third one. In the fourth one we have errors, asserts, warnings, logs that will print on the canvas, and but this is available only on the web. And what we're gonna do, then we have errors, asserts, warnings that will print on canvas, again available only on web. Errors, asserts will print on canvas, available only on web. I think these are great when they print on canvas so you can directly see them instead of going to the console because sometimes you might not see the warning or the error and you might not be visually apparent that something's gone wrong and you might not go to your console and have a look so this is great but again when you're publishing it most likely you're going to want zero as a little task i want you to mess around with these different modes mess around with the code uh I've do dodgy stuff so you get errors or you get warnings try and use all deprecated code do cc logs to uh, see the differences in these debug modes then if we go back here yeah, you just need to change this value for the debug mode if 
thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message us at support at sonarsystems.co.uk. The email will be in the description. You can comment on this video or just directly message us via YouTube. The base code will be in the tutorial, I mean in the description via a link. We won't actually be providing any source code because we haven't really changed anything. In the next part of this series, we're going to be looking at labels. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.